And this is uh, another application of uh, static equilibrium for grade 12 physics, kind of focusing on the use of torque and how net torque and net forces work together. So for this problem, we have the Morrissey Bridge is going to collapse if column A must support more than 50,000 newtons of weight. Probably not far from the truth. The bridge spans 225 meters, has a mass of 8,500 kilograms. So those numbers are made up. So <laughs> don't go around telling people that's how much uh, the bridge weighs or that's how what the mass of the bridge is. Will the bridge collapse under the circumstances depicted in the diagram? So you've got two vehicles, one going to the right, one going to the left, certain distances from columns and certain masses. So don't worry about speeds or velocities or anything like that. It's just where they are at the position at that moment. So the red car, 500 kilograms, 50 meters from the left. Excuse me. Yeah, 50 meters from column A. And then the other old buggy is 400 kilograms and it's 75 meters from column B. So we want to focus on column A. So this will be a little bit different simply that we're going to place our pivot point for this problem in column B because we want to solve for column A. So whatever column you're trying to solve for, put the pivot point at the other end. So that is our pivot. Okay. And so we have our, in this case, I think five forces. So labeling forces, we've got a force upwards from column A supporting um, weight and torque. We've got the red car, a force of gravity down, don't forget the force of gravity from the middle of the bridge and the force of gravity from the, uh, the buggy car, the old, old school car. So I've got, and I've got, of course, the force of column provided from column B, upward force from column B. So labeling my forces, F1, F2, F3, F4, etc., F5. So once again, you can't use the net force relationship because you'll end up with two variables and one equation. So we're going to go straight to torque with the uh, pivot point placed at point at column B. So my force from 5 uh, goes away because my torque there is 0. So everywhere there's a torque, every, excuse me, everywhere there's a force, there's a torque. And this one would make it spin clockwise around the pivot point according to that arrow, so that would be a negative torque. F2 would make this go counterclockwise, that's a positive torque. F3 counterclockwise, positive torque. Remember, it's the rotation around the pivot point, so since our pivot point's on the right, it's kind of opposite to the other problems we may have done in class. So just always start each problem kind of over and look at your forces and how the, they would rotate around the pivot point. And there we've got a torque 5 at the end, but that's 0. All right, so we set up our net torque equation. So it's the sum of all the torques that are there. I'm not going to write all of them out, plus 1 to, one to 5. You can understand that part. So I've got torque from 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 is 0. So I need my see my numbers. Torque 1 is going to be... Uh, 225 minus 50, so that's 175. Remember, all of our distances are measured from column B. The distance between A and B is 225 meters. So, force torque 1 will be negative 175 times 500 times 9.81 to get that the actual force of gravity. And then these will be additional forces plus... Oh, I forgot my... I forgot my F1. That's what we're trying to solve for in this problem. I got that a little bit backwards, so just note that I kind of started over there. I've got my f five forces. F1 is what I don't know. I'm going to leave that blank. F2 is a positive torque, a positive 175 times 500 uh, times 9.81. Add to that F3, which is the weight of the bridge times the distance the bridge is, the center of gravity of the bridge is from part B, so it's 8,500 kilograms. So it's half of 2.225. It's 112 and a half times 8,500 times 9.81. And then just underneath here, I'm going to do the other force, a 4. It's 75 meters times 400 times 
then plus zero. Okay. The torque at the pivot point is zero. So I'll simplify this a little bit so I can write it in one line. So I got uh, 175 times 500 times 9.81. That is. Now I just noticed that I forgot something, so as you're watching this, <laughs> I just took a few minutes to think about something, and it seems like just half a second for you guys. Uh, one very important important piece of information for do torque, you have to incorporate the distance from the pivot point, which I forgot to do on F1. So we're working with torque, so it's zero equals 225 F1. That is key. Uh, as I was looking at all the numbers, I was going to get a huge amount of force that had to be supported from column one, and it just didn't make any sense. So I forgot my distance times my force. So writing this out again, so it's zero equals 225 F1 plus 175 times 500 times 9.81. That is 858,375 added to 112.5 times 500 times 9.81 uh, that is 9.38 million and then added to that 75 times 400 times 9.81 294,300 okay, carefully add those numbers bring them to the other side and divide by 225 so plus 9.38 times 10 to the 6 plus 8588375 equals on the left we have negative 10 uh, once again you might notice just what I did there and again I rushed through this problem sorry but that don't mean to confuse you the torque from number one F1 is a negative torque and I put that up in my initial diagram and I forgot it here, negative 225 F1, that's going to make the whole problem work out to be a positive force. We, have, we always should get positive magnitudes when we work out our torque problems for force. So I noticed that wasn't going to happen, so I took a quick look at my numbers to make sure that would happen and where I went wrong. So when you get up at 4 in the morning, you miss stuff. And then your video gets too long and people get bored. So hopefully you're watching this through to the end because it's a, it's a wicked climax here coming up. Ah, so negative 10,532,675, divide that by 225, and we get exactly what we're supposed to get. So the force, upward force provided by column A is 46,812 or thereabouts, depending on your rounding. So no, it won't break for another weekend. It will survive. Now mind you, there's only two cars on it, so you know, add someone walking with groceries, and that bridge is done for.